Hello, Lucas here, back again. As you can see, I have a new room. Actually, a whole new apartment. I have a new pair of glasses and I have this thing new, brand new. This is uh, the VGM 503 Classic. I can only imagine that you're far more interested into my new pair of glasses. Still, let's have a talk uh, about this device. You already might have guessed this is a gimbal, the VGM 503 Klassisch. Klassisch is actually a German word and means classic. Honestly, I have no idea in which way this device is classic. However, as a German, I'm obviously flattered to see a German word in the product name of such a device. The first thing that comes to my mind when I think about gimbals is, can I afford this piece of hardware? Because gimbals are kind of pricey. So there are lots of gimbals, dozens of gimbals on the market. So there are many gimbals with a form factor a little bit smaller, like this one. And there are many gimbals um, that can carry only a smaller load, not heavy cameras, also like this one. And then there are even more gimbals which cost a fortune, maybe even more than your camera. Not like this one. Obviously, you have to take a bit more money into your hands than if you would buy something like this normal hand-operated uh, stabilizer. Still, the VGIM is really affordable and sits in the range at around $500, which is really cheap for a gimbal. Maybe let's start off with something really small and really simple, which is this. This is, um, as you can see, a little plastic disc. And this is more nothing more than a stand that we can set where you can uh, pull your gimbal in. So this is for the initial setup for balancing the gimbal. So you can place it on your table. What you may have already noticed here is this little four-way joystick in blue. We have a little button where we can switch modes. We'll get into the modes a little bit later. On off switch on the back. And down here we have an audio jack connector, which is not of course for audio, it's uh, so you can connect a remote. The remote, uh, the wired remote is not yet finished as far uh, as I was told. So this will come in the future, it will be very handy and will connect over this port. Maybe you saw this suitcase already in the background. This is of course not an original Peli case, still it's a very sturdy a little suitcase made of plastic where the entire gimbal fits in and also of course will carry your batteries. Then we have this. This is a nice little handlebar where we can attach our gimbal to. It has a top handle and two side handles. Each of those has a little one fourth inch thread on the top. And of course, with the help of a thumbscrew, we can uh, rearrange the position. And um, we will get into this a little bit later, but for the starters, I was told that this port here now is compatible to the system of the Ronin gimbals, which is pretty neat if you use one of their systems sometimes too. On top of the gimbal is a little micro USB port with which we can hook it up to our computer. So we can uh, do the calibration and the initial setup to get this gimbal to just the way we like it. If you're in the field though, a USB port is not very practical. But if you're an Android user, there is a free app from the manufacturer of the boards um, where you can set up the whole gimbal, which is a pretty neat thing. I think there are some difficulties with iOS and Windows phones. Still, if you're an Android user, if you have it on your phone or like um, on the tablet, you can set up nearly everything uh, because there's an app for that. Talking about the hardware, this gimbal features a normal Alex Moss board, which I think most gimbals use these days. So you have like two sensors and a great main board, and of course a really great software. If you're already into this stuff, into the Alex Moss system, you will feel at home with this gimbal. If you never use such a system, let me tell you that there's a little bit of a learning curve. So it's not just plug and play, where you um, get your camera on the gimbal, switch it on, and you have the perfectly stabilized footage out of the box. Sadly, it doesn't work like that and I also had to learn the hard way. However, it's not impossible to learn it and it's not too hard to begin with when you know where to look. Last but not least, um, there's a little feature that I really like about this and this is hidden here in the slat. Uh, and these are a few connectors, as you can see. And with these connectors, we can hook up, for example, uh, the DC coupler for our camera. So we can actually run our camera directly um, from the gimbal. Of course, this has some advantages. For example, we don't have to remove the camera to switch batteries, which can be a hassle sometimes depending on your setup, because you have to rebalance the sled then again. Also, it may take more time. Of course, the batteries of your gimbal will start to drain a lot faster. However, they're much more convenient to change. And also, if you get quality batteries, uh, you will have a long battery time anyway. 
Let's have a look at the batteries hidden inside the handle. So this gimbal runs from three batteries and these actually are the same ones that fit into the G7 cage that I reviewed earlier. So these are 18650 batteries and look up for the flat top, not with a little hat like an AA battery. If you get quality high capacity cells from these, like uh, from Panasonic, Senyo or Samsung, you can really run the whole gimbal in your camera for a few hours. Of course, if you have a few more of them, you can run them for several days. Now that we have talked for a bit, maybe it's time to power on the gimbal uh, itself. There it is. Before we can actually use the gimbal in this state, we have to set it up, of course. Um, it will come pre-calibrated out of the factory, but usually uh, because of different circumstances that may not uh, do the trick for you. Uh, the first thing that we would have to do is like to um, balance the camera on our gimbal. Uh, I know you may have thought that we can get around this, um, which was a very um, painful part of owning an old stabilizer that we used years ago. However, it's much easier um, on a gimbal to balance it. Still, we have to do this so the motors can work properly and only work when they are needed to. And then, of course, we have to calibrate our gimbal and I would recommend you um, to watch a video directly from Covacam which is more like a 20 minute tutorial how to set up the gimbal the initial first time setup because me it helped a lot not only to set up the gimbal but also to understand the system a lot better so because this is much better than anything I can do now because it would just be copycat of that video I would really recommend you for the initial setup to watch their video or their videos there are a few more and um, so I I will spare out this part. So after the setup that I skipped for now, um, we have the gimbal in a usable state. And now let's talk a bit about what we can do with it. So the first basic things, of course, um, we can hold the camera steady. So I think you already know what you want to do with the gimbal. So let's talk a bit about the functions of this one. The first thing I want to talk about here is the little blue joystick. And as you can imagine, physically it's not as sensitive as from a game controller like a PlayStation or an Xbox. And um, the thing is, what we still have is if you push this very lightly, the gimbal will move, move slow. And if I push it much further, then it will move faster. The speed of the movement of uh, the gimbal can be set inside the camera. So if this is too slow for you, you can of course raise it. Another thing I set up is a little bit of a delay in the movement. So basically it's like an easy ease when I start and stop the gimbal. It's not like this really hacked robot movement. It's a little bit smoother, as you can see. And you can increase or decrease this kind of delay. I also tried to increase it by a lot more, but then um, the movement was a bit spongy, so you lost a lot of control. So I would not recommend to push this too far. However, uh, a value like this works kind of good, I think. The only other control that we have on the gimbal is this little button here, which is used to switch the functions or the modes of the gimbal. Basically, we have five actions that we can set and you can program them again inside your software to your convenience so you can like set up um, it the way you want to have it. So for example, for the first three functions of this gimbal, I set the modes and how the gimbal will behave, how um, I can use it and the two other remaining functions are used um, for like con convenient functions for the gimbal. When you power up the gimbal, uh, it will boot into the first function by default, but we can also reach this function by pressing the button one time. Sound indicates that we are there. So when we press it two times, we enter the next uh, mode. If we push it three times, we get into the next mode. And when we press it four times, you could hear now that there was a different sound and this means that I'm not into a mode anymore how this gimbal behaves but in a, a, what I call the convenient function. In this case I now um, can roll the camera around this axis instead of moving in left and right. However, the fifth function is not entered by pressing it five times. No, you have to press and hold it. In my case, this is the recalibration of the gimbal and setting it back uh, to a neutral position. So now that we know how to enter a mode, let's have a look uh, which are the common ones that we can use. 
The first move we have is the follow mode, which will follow the general movement of any axis where you hold the gimbal. So left, right, up, down, doesn't matter, it follows everything. The second mode is the so-called half lock mode, where it only follows the horizontal axis, but no other. So it stands still. The last default mode is the full lock mode, which fully locks the camera on any axis, so it always points in one direction, which is also very convenient for selfie shooting. And as you would expect it, the joystick works in any mode. Now we also have to realize what a gimbal can do and what not. It can easily stabilize for all axes, but it cannot really stabilize up-down movement that it can occur while walking, as you can see in this example. However, just like with an older handheld stabilizer, you can reduce that to a minimum with a bit of leg work. Funny enough, visually this is nearly no issue if, if you follow a person. Did you see how easy that was? This is the way you can reach into the upside down mode, when you want to um, get to the ground a lot further or just uh, hold it like this. This position of course is the most classic one to use with a rig like this, so we can hold it like the most commonly used gimbals. So now we have the camera upside down and like uh, can hold it like any other gimbal. Pretty neat. So now with the top handle, of course, we can uh, reach the ground very nicely and very quickly. And this is the way I shot uh, the dog video I posted earlier. I just held the gimbal with one hand upside down, which is pretty neat to use it like that. Of course, you can also use two hands um, to make it uh, work like for a lot longer because at some point this will go onto your arms. Of course, we can also switch it around again and hold it like this. Therefore, it's more convenient to switch um, the grip uh, the other way. And now this is a pretty neat thing because now at this position, I can really comfortably hold the gimbal like uh, I have my arms on a really nice position and still I can see the display. So basically I have it on my eye level. And of course we can also raise the camera up into the air and save on the jib crane in some cases. So basically if you have just one shot or you want to disable following shot um, on a higher level that you could not or only very hardly achieve with the jib crane or if you're into documentary or new stuff and have like a large group of people, a demonstration or what, whatever, uh, you can get a really nice shots when you have the, like the camera just much taller than you are and can point it down. Of course, such a rig is also very convenient to attach accessories to. So we could easily attach a little monitor here or, or cell phone connected through Wi-Fi to have an image um, of what we are actually filming. Also, what you can do is like get a larger battery because this gimbal does not only run from the 18650 batteries that I showed you earlier, you can also attach a LiPo battery pack um, to this because there's an adapter that you can buy for this gimbal. So basically you get um, a much larger, maybe even cheaper energy source. It is a bit bigger, so you have to attach it here. But um, it's very convenient, especially if you already are into racing and have maybe these battery packs lying around. I think it's 3S LiPo batteries. Very convenient and of course also suitable for a long day at work or if you just want to look like really professional. One thing we didn't talk about yet is weight. And this gimbal can carry up to around one kilogram when we follow the specs, which fits pretty nicely for this setup of an A7S and the standard Sony 28 to 70 millimeter lens. This will also work pretty well for a GH4 and the 14 to 140 millimeter lens. Another thing is the weight that we hold with our hand, because you can imagine there's a one kilogram camera on here and we have the gimbal, which is not super heavy, but also has its own weight. And we carry around this um, with one hand the whole day. 
Of course, this can be pretty exhausting. Still not as exhausting as the usual one hand operated stabilizers that we used before. One reason is that we have to carry this stabilizer with one hand while we control it with another. Yet there is no issue holding a gimbal with two hands. Even if you look like a moron. So as the name of this video indicated, there will be a second part of this review where we talk a bit more about the accessories that we can attach to our handlebars and hopefully by then I have the battery adapter and maybe then uh, also the joystick for the external usage will be finished. Maybe we will also have a little look into the software and for the setup in terms of how we uh, balance this gimbal before we calibrate it. Said that, I can really only recommend this gimbal for you because for the price that you pay, you have a really great product in your hands. And you have this little learning curve, you know, you have to get into it a bit, you have to read a bit, you have to um, understand the basic concepts. It's not too hard. I just want to make sure that people know before they buy that it's not like plug and play, but it's not too hard. And it's so rewarding to have this floating steady footage that only very good operators could get before and now uh, nearly everybody can. It's not a wonder pill, but still it's so much better than the hand operated stabilizers if you don't have a ton of experience and a very good control of your body that I don't have. So um, such a gimbal is really a nice little piece. Now thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you soon in the second part of this review and of course in all the other videos I uh, want to make soon. So um, yeah, goodbye.